Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and if you own a Samsung television and wonder about gaming, on this video I'm going to explain some of the different things inside of the menu system that you can understand. Now today we're going to be using this TV right here. This is the CU7000. It's an entry level television, so it doesn't have all the fancy gaming bars or anything like that, but some of the things I'm going to show you on this video will apply to your TV as well. On this video, we're going to cover the PS5, the Xbox, as well as Microsoft Game Pass, where you can do cloud gaming on the television. I'll show you some of the settings, input lag, and more on this video. So sit back and relax. Let's get started. Now, gaming is very important to a lot of people, and they don't want to spend a lot of money. So let's check out the gaming features of this. And keep in mind, everything I'm going to show you can be used on most newer Samsung televisions. So I just plugged in the PS5 and as you can see right here, it automatically detected it. And we can go ahead and reposition it with the remote control if you want to put it in a different spot. But if you're okay where it lands, just go ahead and press on the center remote control and there you have it. And it will change the color of the icon and show a little uh, PlayStation badge on it as well. Another thing I want to point out, whenever you plug in your gaming console, it's going to detect everything automatic and you'll have to go ahead and set up your HDR if you plan on playing with that just by changing the brightness on the screen that's available. And I also want to point out that the CEC will pick up the gaming console and you can control all the features just like you would with the controller as far as if you want to watch any of the media like going over here and clicking on any of the apps that you previously installed which is a cool feature. But there's another setting that you want to check to make sure you're getting the best resolution. So if you pull up the menu, you'll go over here to the connections and then right here it says external devices. You can see that the CEC is enabled and that's how we control it with the remote. But there's another feature that you want to take a look at and it's called Input Signal Plus. Now if you go into the setting, make sure all these blue boxes are checked off and this allows the TV to play your external devices at maximum resolution. Another feature that you might want to take a look at is called HDMI Black Level. You see it's set up to automatic. But if you want to take control of the picture, you press on it and you see you can give it better contrast or you can put it in normal mode, but most people leave it on automatic. And this is ideal for someone who's watching movies and you see a little bit of backlights glowing in here. This will make the TV a little bit darker, but it will make the contrast a lot richer. And that's thanks to the Samsung UHD dimming. But we'll leave it on automatic for now. Now what you can do as well, you can go into screen and video. And this is where you can check your output signal and you can see right now that the PlayStation is seeing 3840 by 2160 and that's 4K resolution and the color format is RGB which is going to be great. If you want to manually change the resolution you can go over to that screen but I want to point out here that this TV does not support 1440p and it doesn't support AMD FreeSync or GeForce so you're not going to be able to get VRR on this television. And if you have a PlayStation, here's another thing you want to consider, and it's called RGB range. So right now, set up to automatic, but if you want to get the full resolution, you can manually override it if you don't want to use the PlayStation's recommendation. With all these settings in place, you're now ready to game to get the best picture quality out of the PS5. And there's something else to point out here. Whenever you're playing games on the PlayStation, depends on what the game is, you can choose these different levels. So for example, this is performance mode that's going to give you a higher frame rate but lower resolution, or you can go over to what they call image quality, and it's gonna give you a better picture quality, but lower frame rate. So if you're getting tearing or smearing on your image, it might be because of the settings of the gaming console. So when it comes to the Xbox, you're gonna set it up the same way, but I'll show you a few other things, and we're gonna see if this TV will support 120 hertz at any level of resolution. So let's jump right in. The first thing I want to show you is that when I turn on the Xbox, you see that it did find it and it created an icon and it did label it Xbox Series X slash S, which is a cool feature. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the settings in the Xbox, but keep in mind, you wanna make sure that you check off those boxes to make sure that the TV is getting the maximum resolution. Now under TV and display, you can see that it will support 4K. Again, it will not support the 120 Hertz and it will not support Dolby Vision. And just remember this, that Samsung does not support Dolby Vision. They have their own format called HDR10+. Now going to the video modes, you can see that it does support a few things, but it doesn't support variable refresh rate. Again, Dolby Vision or Dolby Vision Gaming. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna override the system uh, just to see if we can get 
120 hertz to play on it. Now we're back into the Xbox screen. Let's take a look at some of the display resolutions. So it's 640 by 40, it will support 120 hertz. But we wanna try out the 1440p. Now right here, it shows that there is a 120 hertz option. When I click on it, the TV is thinking. You can see right there, we've got the spinning wheel. Boom, it's not supported. But let's try to lower the resolution. So I'm gonna go down to 1080p, and there it is. Now this is a 60 hertz panel, but it will accept a 1080p signal at 120 hertz. Uh, I don't know if you'll see any big difference gaming that way, but if you have, make sure you leave a comment below because I'd like to see what you think. Now leaving it in this mode, another thing you can do is you can go through this calibration screen. You're basically gonna go through these check boxes and you can resize everything. You can adjust the levels in the TV to get the best picture quality for HDR. So that's pretty much the options in the Xbox. The good thing to know is that it will take an input of 1080p at 120 hertz. Now we're back into the main menu. Now this TV does support all these cloud services. So it looks like we have Xbox, Luna, which is owned by Amazon, GeForce Now, and a few other ones here. But let's go ahead and do a few things here. First of all, if you have good internet, and I'm talking to be on the safe side, about 50 megabits per second download speeds, then you might be able to get the most out of the Xbox cloud system, assuming that you're paying for a premium service, which I am. So there's an option on here for accessory. In this case, I'm gonna take an Xbox controller and connect it to the television. So what you would do is just hover over the controller, hit the plus so you can start the pairing process of connecting this through Bluetooth to the television. So we're gonna press on that. And you get this guide, you're gonna go ahead and hit continue. Now that we have the TV in pair mode, if you use the Xbox controller, just press and hold that little button on the front of it. It'll start blinking, and now the TV will find a controller, as you can see right there. So we just go down, we're gonna go ahead and pair it, connect and pair, and that's how simple it is. Now this is connected to the television via Bluetooth, and we can use it for gaming. Plus, look at this. You can do it for some basic features like a remote control. Now we're loading up the Xbox Cloud, and I'll go ahead and get it all set up so we can see how well it games. And keep in mind, I have 500 megabits up and down here at this location, so it should stream pretty well. But shh, there's an easier way. Just make sure you have the Xbox app installed on your phone, and then you can just use the barcode, easy peasy. And this is what I was talking about. In order to use the cloud gaming, we have the Bluetooth controller, I do have the Gaming Pass Ultimate, and it does require five gigahertz with 20 megabits per second or higher. But now we're on the cloud and using the controller just like you could on your normal console. And one of the cool things I like about this is some of the games that's available on the cloud that you already have on your console, you can go in here and resume. And I just wanna see if this has lag on it. Again, it's, this can vary according to your internet speed. Look at this, the CU7000 cloud gaming, and it looks really good. And as you can notice there, the resolution is not as good, but we don't have a physical console. And just like before, they still have that option. So in performance mode, it's gonna have more frames per second, but you're gonna lose resolution. And if you switch over, you have the image quality where the picture looks better, but it drops frame rate. So that'd be up to you. You definitely can see that all of this is black in there. It doesn't even compare to the gaming console, but hey, this first, first generation, I'm sure to get better. And it might look better if I had ethernet connect in versus Wi-Fi. For bonus footage, I want to check out Apple TV gaming on this television. Again, it works with any television. So this is a 4K Apple unit. It has 128 gigs built right into it. So what you would do if you have an Apple TV and you wanna set up with the Apple Arcade is go into settings because we need to connect a controller to it like we did before. So I'm gonna use the same Xbox controller that we paired to the television. So what you're gonna do is go down to remote and devices. And from there, we're gonna to go to Bluetooth and then we're gonna press that Xbox button once again into the light blink so we know it's in pairing mode. And as we go down this list, you can see right there, there's an Xbox wireless controller. We can go and press on it and now it is connected to the TV and we get this option to pair it. Pretty simple, right? So first of all, we're gonna click on the App Store. At the top, we're gonna to go to Arcade. I do have it assigned to my account 
just because I buy a lot of TVs, they gave me a free promotion for it. So let's go and press on this game and download it. Next, we're gonna take a look at the input lag, but I wanna let you know that this is a 60 frames per second, 1080p input lag tester. I've been looking at some new models, which I might get, and they're about $500 just to do this one test, but we'll see how the future goes. So here's the input lag, but I'm gonna show you the differences if you don't change it to gaming mode. So right now, we're getting 33.4 milliseconds. Uh, if I pull up the settings, and we go into these different modes. We have movie mode. Eco mode, standard, dynamic. You can see they're all pretty high as far as lag. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit back. Now you will find this on the general menu is basically gaming mode. And a lot of times this TV will automatically detect it. But you can also go down to connections right here in the menu. And then there's one that's labeled gaming mode settings. So right now it's off. There's auto and on. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And what this will do is put the TV in low latency mode. Exit out this screen. You're getting about 9.4 milliseconds, which is pretty respectful for a television. So as far as a gaming television, I think overall this one's gonna really hit the mark as far as being a budget price televisions. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I showed you a few different options that you can use on a Samsung TV for gaming and some of the different menus that you wanna look through. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.